to be here a long time before the first started to fly, and actually, he had the guts to show up here today <laughs> to face a friendly but spirited crowd. So, most everybody probably knows something about Jerry, but here are a few details. He is in his 25th season with the Kings organization. He serves as the club's director of player personnel. He's responsible for keeping abreast of both the professional and collegiate talent pools available to the Kings, and he also helps to oversee their scouting efforts. He wears many hats within the organization. He retired from his post as general manager of the Sacramento Monarchs following the 2003 season. In his six seasons as the club's general manager, the Monarchs qualified for league play playoffs four times. He's also a member of the Kings Broadcast Network talent team, and he works as a color analyst for all the club's televised contests. He's a native of French Lick, Indiana. Now there's a city name to work with. <laughs> Some, we think Ranch Cordova is a mouthful. It's not, it's not French Lick. He's got a unique understanding of interaction among players. Coaches and the front office do in part to his experience gained through his varied role within the Kings organization, including as coach. So we have to ask Jerry, what's going on? Please help me welcome Jerry Reynolds. Thanks uh, a lot for having me, and uh, you're right, I, I recall uh, Melody contacted me on this date, and uh, it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> uh, I thought, oh yeah, you know, if I get January or something, definitely we weren't going to be in the playoffs, so I looked at the schedule, so I'll be free that day, and uh, didn't know what all else was going to happen, but uh, yeah, I'm happy to, to be here. I want to uh, clarify a couple things. First of all, you know, French Lake, Indiana. <laughs> Let me explain that to you. For those of you who need explaining too, uh, the old saying in Indiana is, South Bend's in the north, North Vernon's in the south, and French Lake ain't what you think it is. <laughs> uh, so, uh, we have another Hoosier here from, from New Albany, Jeffersonville, Indiana, area, which is just really uh, pretty close to French Lake, about 50 miles away. And, uh, I say Louisville, Kentucky is where it's closest to, in case you really care. Uh, but I'll tell you this, and I tell people this, and very, some people have finally started doing it. It's a great resort. It truly is. Uh, there's two four-star hotels, and they're both bigger and nicer than, quite honestly, anything in the Sacramento area. You know, four to six hundred room hotels, and uh, two championship level golf courses, a Donald Ross course, a Pete Dye course. Uh, you know, as a kid growing up, I, I lifeguarded at one of the, one of the resorts, hotel pools. And I, that was the best job I ever had. I mean, seriously, it was the best job. I didn't pay much. But, uh, you know, I mean, except when you're an 18-year-old boy growing up, and, and as you know, when people go to, to a resort to vacation, and the fam especially families, they'll take the 17, 18-year-old girls. <laughs> 17, 18-year-old boys don't go. <laughs> and so by the end of the week, I started looking pretty good to them, you know. <laughs> so, like I say, it, it worked out pretty good for the Jerry man there for a while. <laughs> so, so anyway, so that, that's a little bit of that. And then, of course, the other French Lake. But you can punch that up on the, your computer, the French Lake, you know, French Lake Resort, French Lake Indiana, and you can see all that. And I'm not totally full of crap, but just a little bit. <laughs> but it, it is, it's really a, a high-end uh, resort, very nice, uh, for a little small town of 2,000. That's really what it is. And it's better known, of course, for, because Larry Bird is from there. And then people always say, well, did you know Bird growing up and all that? <laughs> yes, you know, his family lived down the road from, from our house. Uh, we, were, we were out the country at the time, and Larry's family was at that time for a few years, and they moved into the, right into the city. Uh, we were suburbanites. We lived four miles out of town. Uh, and uh, anyway, but uh, yeah, I knew Larry. See, my youngest brother Randy is about 14 years younger, and he's in the same grade as as Larry. And so they played ball together. And, and Larry's oldest brother Mark was a couple years behind me, and we played. So even if you didn't know, want to know somebody in a town like that, you knew him. And, uh, like I said, I knew Larry when he's a little bitty ugly guy, and uh, grew to be a big ugly. <laughs> I, had a, I had a reporter once in, uh, when I was coaching back in the late 80s in, in Dallas, and he came up to me and said, you know, said, I've only known two people from French Lake, Indiana. He said, uh, you and Larry Bird. And I said, well, okay. He 
said, both of you are pretty ugly. <laughs> Thank you so much. I said, yeah, I want to say, you know, you ain't no doll yourself. Here, but, uh, I said, you might not believe this, but I said, Larry and I are probably the two best looking guys that ever come out of here. <laughs> you know, we had to leave. You know, it just wasn't safe for us. <laughs> There's some pretty gnarly uh, buckaroos back around there. I'm telling you. Uh, so, yeah, that's about all of, all of that. But, yeah, you know, it, it, it's been a, a neat deal, obviously, being with the Kings all these years and a lot of things. I, my role, really, on the basketball side is, you know, I've still got a title of director of player personnel. Honestly, I work for Jeff P. And uh, we have a great relationship. You know, I think that the fact that I've done all these things, I travel with the team all the time, so he doesn't feel it's necessary. Obviously, I've always known all the coaches in the league. And, and so, you know, kind of his eyes and ears with the team on the road. And uh, I think Coach Westfall trusts me. And so, we, you know, it's that. I, I don't really do very much scouting anymore. I don't have time. But I do my role basically is once – the season's over then, you know, I, I spend time contacting agents and setting up player visits and things of that nature. So my role is a lot less than it was and I'm comfortable with that, you know. I, I really enjoy the TV part. You know, I've got spoiled, you know, we we uh, travel very well. When I came in the league as a, years ago as a coach, uh, we travel commercial. And and I always said, one of the things that always, I always noticed right away, that if you didn't know what the pecking order was, uh, in the NBA as a coach, you found out pretty quick. Players flew first class. Coaches flew coach. <laughs> so, you know, you you think you're the boss and then you get on this plane and there's all your players sitting in first class and you're walking right to the back. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, oh, you think the tail don't wake the dog a little bit, you, you've got some adjustments to make. And I've been a 20 year, I spent 20 years co coaching in college at a lot of different levels and so where you really are the boss. You know, and so, so really, I, I say actually, uh, coaching base kind of like being married. You know, you you've got a title, but you really have no authority. <laughs> <laughs> you know, very similar. Like I said, I guess that's one reason I've been able to stay married for 43 years. I, I uh, I've said said before, you know, I don't tr try to run my wife's life at all, and I don't try to run mine either. <laughs> because I think most of you've been married as long as I have. You know, you. You, you finally understand that psychologically they control you. you know, it just gets easier to do what they say. And, and I've got a kind of a strategy on that, by the way. I, uh, I agree with everything. You know, I mean, seriously. She'll say, uh, hon, can you do this uh, later today or tomorrow? Yeah, oh yeah, huh? Uh, oh, sure. When I was younger, I'd say, well, no, I don't want to do that. Just create all kinds of problems. Now I agree to. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> you know, but I mean, hell, she's old as I am, but damn near. And I mean, she'll forget. <laughs> but, um, so it just it worked pretty good, you know. And, uh, so I mean, you you know, you have to kind of develop a strategy. I don't know how it would be if I were to retire, though. I have some concerns about that because I think one of the things that's made our marriage very good is me being gone. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, for the most part, I think she's, you know, she, she hates to see me go, but she's been happy to see me come back. I don't know if that could change. <laughs> and of course, on, on both fronts, I might add. And, you know, so, anyway, I don't know if that's, I know it's a lot of the players, the young players will always come to me, you know, it's been married a year or two and have their little issues, as, as we all do, you know, especially early in marriages, I think, in particular. Uh, once, you, once you find out there's not, 24 hours of sex every day. <laughs> I suppose some of you found that out. I, don't know. <laughs> I, I suspect most of you are looking at you, but that's <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, anyway, I, you know, they come and say, well, you know, you know, we're having these problems, that problem. I said, you know, I, I said, one, one bit of advice I would give you, I said, that'll work and help you. Just assume that whatever year of marriage you are, your third or seventh or ninth, Twelfth, whatever it is, that's the toughest one you'll ever see. <laughs> Each year, just assume that. <laughs> if you think it's going to get a lot better, no, you can adjust, but you just adjust a little more. But it's, you're going to have problems every year. But you know, that's just the way it is. You know, look for the look for the good parts in each person. Everybody's flawed, and you'll find out that she's looking at you the same way. You know, everybody's a little bit flawed. So, so anyway. So that might, might work, I think, it, for some of the young coaches and people. Advice. 
Somebody's got your wife trying to call you. <laughs> <laughs> Wondering when you're going to get home. Uh, well, as, uh, you know, just thinking about some things to talk about, obviously you'll have some questions, and I, and I will try to answer them as much as I can, because I really know probably less about certain things. You don't say less, but not even more either. But, uh,